Hey guys, so I'm starting a new series for questions that I receive frequently from Facebook, Instagram, my email list, LinkedIn, Twitter, and a bunch of other places I hang out at. Also throughout meetings with some folks that follow me or some partners of mine and others who are kind of interested in what I do and the way that I do it here. And the first question that I'm going to start with is what got you interested in digital marketing in the first place? And now, this is a pretty peculiar moment for me simply because when I started with digital marketing, I was already doing marketing for several years in a row without even realizing it. And the other funny thing is that as a technical engineer and as I've started dabbling with computers as the age of nine when I wrote my first software, well actually the age of three when I started playing with computers, it was really hard for me to actually grasp the idea that I can do marketing in the first place. And I remember back in the day I was working for a remote company, this was my first full-time, well, first remote job, and I started as a software engineer, I spent a few months as an engineer, but eventually it turned out that I was doing a bunch of other things that I realized later on, and I received a call from my CEO and he said, it was a team of about 40 or 50 people, and I said, look, I see that you're actually doing quite a lot of work outside of your core area of expertise and we don't really have any strong marketers on the team right now, but you can deal with certain community activities and certain relationships within the space and, and really help us move the needle forward. So this was something that struck me as unexpected and extraordinary to some extent. This was the first time I actually felt that I was stepping into a marketing pro and we even had a more or less lengthy discussion in terms of, well, I'm not really comfortable doing marketing, marketing is nonsense, it's basically a bunch of empty jibber jabber blabber chats, not really com contributing anything, not having a measurable result, and, and so on. So luckily my CEO was a very patient person, and I still love him for what he's actually done to me as an inspirator and as a leader for contributing to my own management capabilities. I said, look, I know what you're talking about. I've discussed that with other technical engineers. They don't really get the idea of marketing in the first place, but trust me, you would really do great at the job. So we talked about different roles and, and kind of the position that I worked with was a technical marketing specialist. So this was kind of the thing that made me happy that I'm still a technical marketer and not just someone who's, who's talking, uh, again, jibber jabber out there. So at this particular role, and, and later on when I was doing a, a revision and kind of a going back in time in order to figure out what was happening, uh, I figured out that the reason I was promoted to this role is I was already active in the community, I was passionate about the community, I wanted to apply and kind of speak at the conference for our products and present these hundreds of people and kind of present our products and, and let people know how they can contribute and, and discuss the open source capabilities of this so that we don't necessarily have to charge them any money for this one, but of course agencies and freelancers they can pay for this because they, they can recoup the money in a pretty short period of time and so on. So this is kind of the, the starting moment. I also started my own YouTube channel doing demo tutorials for our product. And the way I started at first, it was simply easier for me to explain to people. And at some point of time, I already had 10 or 12 videos and I just let my boss know and, and said, look, are you comfortable with me actually maintaining this channel? It's an unofficial one. That's how I started it. I just recorded a few videos. It's easier for me to hand it out as examples. And he was super satisfied that I took the initiative to do that. And it was really nothing for me. I mean, this was the reason why I did it unofficially because, and, and, and that's why I want to really spark self-driven motivation in people. Because when you're doing something under the, the corporate hat, when you're doing something on behalf of the company, it's normal if you get frozen and if you really can't commit to doing that at your fullest. Well, not really committed to fullest, but you have to comply with certain regulations, you have to comply with the brand voice of the company, you have to comply with a bunch of different other factors and discuss with different people and so on. And when you do that yourself, when you just start a blog, an educational blog or a channel or anything like unofficially without of course jeopardizing the brand, uh, I'm talking as a supplementary but unofficial resource, then you can do whatever you want and as soon as it doesn't contradict with the brand values, it's not directly associated with the brand, which makes it super awesome. You have the freedom to do what, whatever you do, and still you're contributing quite a lot to the business, which is, again, extremely awesome. So that's more or less where I thought I kind of officially started with marketing. But when I come back like several years earlier 
Actually, first off, I had to kind of market myself as a computer specialist at the age of nine, which was kind of ridiculous. When I landed kind of my first job repairing computers and reinstalling Windows and a bunch of other software applications. And again, I was super young, but I was just hanging out here and there. I was preaching to some other folks what to do and how to do it. I was helping out in an assistant capacity to the owners of the businesses that were doing this until I kind of started doing this more or less for a living and making a living out of this type of job. Later on, I had to do some marketing. I was doing free articles for news websites, free translation for software products, which is what led to some paid opportunities, such as working for various brands, writing security journals and, and other types of content which is kind of how I also networked my way into another community, which was like Classifield's website for different types of verticals. That's how I started with one, with the second one, third one, which led to a half-time job, which I was able to do at seventh grade or something like that, which was extremely awesome, simply because I could do that from home and I can administer some websites and collect data and set up kind of separate websites, organized in a specific manner. Uh, you can think of like different verticals of Google just designated for certain categories like restaurants or bars or clubs or different bands or different genres of music or different games whatever you want to name it and and doing this also led to kind of doing other relationships and finding my first development job and 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 so on and so on that's later on i participated in, in co-writing a book and recently i actually wrote my own book 244 pages on entrepreneurship which is pretty awesome you can check it out on Amazon, let me know and I'm going to send you a link. But but essentially that's kind of how it how it all started. I didn't sense the the need of marketing itself. I was working as a freelancer at some point and that's kind of how it how it ended. I was working as a trainer and I had to market my own abilities and I had to sell myself as a trainer in order to land new opportunities such as selling at CERN or Saudi Aramco or some of the other companies that I managed to present at. So it, it was really a complicated matter. It was something that it didn't come off easily, but I didn't really perceive it as a marketing job either. It was something that I, I knew that I had to find an audience for my resource. I had to find an audience for the services that I offer, for the solutions that I want to present. I wanted to document my journey. I wanted to create exemplary materials that I can refer to as well. Like when I started my first blog back in 2005 or 2006, I started it as a technical journal for technical things that I learned. And I said, well, I'm already doing that as a job anyways. Uh, and there's so much that I can't remember. So basically I'm just going to start my own blog, writing some technical resources and articles and use them as a reference to whenever I need to do the same thing over again. And that's kind of what sparked the engagement. And as a result, I joined a local blogging community, which came with all sorts of perks and benefits, such as landing the latest Ford Focus for a couple of weeks for driving for free and just doing a test drive as a blogger and just writing for the journey. And again, this is lots of different ways to, to get to the very same point. All of that is marketing and all of that doesn't necessarily have to be perceived as marketing or referred to as marketing but eventually all of us have to market ourselves and if you've done that already if you've managed to pass some exams or pass some visa interviews or something else you've already done marketing yourself if you started your own blog and had to promote it you've already done marketing yourself if you have convinced your parents to sign you up for whatever some language class you've already marketed yourself and this is a skill that you can develop and keep developing over and over and over and over again be it in a an official capacity or an unofficial one but regardless this is something that could help you out quite a lot and that's what I kind of realized just five or six years ago when I actually recognized the fact that I'm going to deal with marketing a lot more seriously and in a, a lot more organized manner in order to scale further.